I found five stocks under $10 a share that have returned an average of 110% so far this year, and they could just be getting started. These small cap penny stocks are flying under Wall Street's radar and are staring down huge catalysts for growth. In this video, I'll not only reveal these five stocks, but show you how to find penny stocks for your portfolio. We're talking cheap stocks under $10 today on Let's Talk Money. Beat that. Make money. Make your money work for Creating you. the financial future you deserve. Let's Talk Money. Joseph Hogue with the Let's Talk Money channel here on YouTube. I want to send a special shout out to everyone in the community. Thank you for taking a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. Those of you in the community know I'm a fundamentals kind of investor, looking at the long-term upside in stocks through that company's financials. It's the work I did over a decade as an analyst, and I truly believe that's how you make the best returns on your money. But that doesn't mean I'm not ready to make a quick profit when I see the opportunity, trading in undervalued names with a near-term upside. And there's no better place to do that in penny stocks under $10 a share. Now, at its core, there's nothing special about a company with a stock price under a certain amount. Uh, that price is just the market cap of the company and the number of shares issued in the market. Stock price should not matter. But in reality, it kind of does, because most investing sites don't allow fractional shares, meaning you need to invest at least enough to buy a whole share. That means there's just more investors to buy shares of those cheaper stocks out there. Uh, there are many more investors that can put down 100 bucks to buy a couple dozen shares of stocks under $10 versus the number of investors that can afford to buy a single share of Amazon at, at well over $2,000 each. There's also the impression that these low price stocks are just inexpensive. It's a visual reaction to a lower number, I realize, but it does mean that there's a stronger investor sentiment and that goes a long way for short-term investing. So I searched the 8,700 stocks available that trade at or below a $10 share price to find five penny stocks to buy right now. Five stocks with the potential for fast returns and long-term profits. In fact, I'm putting these five stocks in my Webull paper portfolio with $10,000 each. Now, I love this option on Webull to create these test portfolios in different standard strategies. Webull is a newer online platform, but perfect for stock traders. Uh, it's completely free to invest. You'll never pay a commission to buy or sell stocks. And the app is just set up for stock trading in a way that Robinhood just can't handle. With Webull, not only do you get free trading, but also access to extended hours quotes before and after the official market open. Now, I'm putting together a review of my experience investing on Webull, but I want to get to those five penny stocks under $10. So I'm going to leave a link in the video description below to learn more about the site. Just like some of these other free apps, so you'll get a free share of stock when you open a Webull account. So make sure you check that out. Now, those of you in the community know, I'm not just going to tell you which stocks to buy. Instead, I want to show you how I picked these stocks and how you can do that for your own portfolio. So just a quick rundown of how I filtered for these five stock picks. I started by screening on Morningstar for small cap stocks with a market cap under one and a half billion, and then a price of around $10 or lower. You can adjust these a little bit if you like. Maybe look for even smaller companies or stocks under $5 a share. Now, I like narrowing this to small cap penny stocks because that's where the biggest opportunities lie. These smaller companies just aren't covered much by Wall Street analysts. So while shares of Apple might have 30 plus analysts pouring over its financials, there might only be a couple people looking at these smaller companies. That means more opportunity to find those undiscovered winners. Now, I also narrowed my list to companies with increasing revenue and income, as well as a healthy balance sheet. So here you can filter for sales and income in the last 12 months that are higher than the year before, and maybe a debt to equity ratio that's lower than the industry average. Now, one of the biggest risks in penny stock is that volatility in finances, that lack of financial flexibility compared to those trillion dollar Apple or Amazons out there. So you definitely want to pay attention to make sure that the company has that strong income statement and the solid assets in its balance sheet. Our first stock under $10 is Zynex, ticker ZYXI, a $259 million medical device manufacturer. Now, this company has been around for 23 years, but just graduated to listing on the NASDAQ this year, which is a big boost to credibility and investor sentiment. Shares are up over 220% so far this year, but could have a lot further to go. Now, Zynex earns most of its revenue from a non-invasive electrotherapy pain management device. That's 90% of sales with 60% of it from recurring monthly supplies. Now, I love that recurring chunk of revenue and the company is developing a blood volume monitor and growing into the EEG diagnostic space as well. Now, Zynex has booked 12 consecutive profitable quarters and orders were up 65% in the first half of 2019. 
it paid out a special dividend in the fourth quarter last year. And that's extremely rare for a small cap stock to pay out a dividend, but the company has 10 million in balance sheet cash and no long-term debt. So it's in an excellent financial position. Now, next up is PaySign, a $500 million vertically integrated provider of prepaid cards and payment processing services. Now, I really like the payment processing space, and PaySign has a lot going for it with its own car. It's growing into the pharmaceutical payments and preparing to launch its own PaySign Premier card. The company reports over 2.5 million cardholders and is growing revenue at a 54% annual rate. Now, even more impressive, though, is that it's booked 100% client retention for eight years running. Now, this is another one with a stellar balance sheet, $6.3 million in cash and no debt for that ultimate financial flexibility. Now, shares are up by 205% this year, and even though this one just crossed into that $10 share mark, I had to include it into this list. Now, three more stocks under $10, but I want to throw this out to the community. Do you have a preference for company size in the stocks that you pick? Uh, do you usually go after higher returns in that small cap penny stock market, or do you prefer the relative safety of large cap companies? Do you try to invest in a certain percentage of your portfolio in small or mid cap companies? So scroll down and tell us in the comments if you look for companies of a certain size in investing it and why you do that. Now, my third pick for best stocks under $10 a share is Farmland Partners, ticker FBI, the largest U.S. farmland REIT. So FBI holds over $1.1 in assets across North America with 162,000 acres in 17 states. Properties are managed by over 125 farmers growing 30 major commercial crops. Now, as an old Iowa boy, I've always loved farmland as an amazing investment opportunity. And this one has some big long-term potential as well as a near-term catalyst. First is just the trend to increasing food demand and land scarcity. A growing middle class is eating more meat, which means less land is being devoted to other crops. On top of this long-term trend, you've got a near-term catalyst in China returning to buy U.S. ag products. Now, this is a solid diversifier for your portfolio. Not only do you get a real estate investment trust with a nice 2.9% dividend, but farmland returns have historically beat the market. Over nearly five decades to 2018, farmland has returned a 10% annualized gain versus just a 6.8% return for the S&P 500 and a 9% return for all REITs. Next here, we have Green Brick Partners, ticker GRBK. This is a home builder with a land development kicker focused in Atlanta, Dallas, and the Denver markets. I like the idea of combining that home builder model with owning and developing the land as well because it, ju it just delivers more control over the products and solid profits. Now, Greenberg continuously outperforms other small and mid-cap peers in the space with a 10.2% pre-tax income margin versus an average of just 5.7% for other small cap companies. This one also has a stronger balance sheet versus those other builders with just 29% debt to capital versus an average of 43% for the 15 companies in the space. Now, Greenberg just passed that $10 per share level with a 35% increase in those shares so far this year, but low interest rates should mean strong home buying and profits to come. Ryerson Holding, ticker RYI, is a $376 million leader in processing and distribution of industrial metals and is founded in 1842. Ryerson has grown its market share in industrial metals from just 3.8% in 2014 to a target of 6% in the U.S. market. It's also improved the gross margin. That's the profitability on sales after paying suppliers by almost 5% since 2007. Now, these are some really strong performance measures for a 177-year-old company. The fact that it can continue to compete and improve on profitability. The company is continuously profitable, even as the broader industrial climate weakens a little bit, and, and it's produced a 42% return already this year. I'm putting these five stocks in my paper portfolio on Webull, and we'll be tracking it for the rest of the year. Check out that link in the description below to learn more about free investing on Webull and get your free share of stock. Click on the video to the right here to see the five stocks I'm investing in for the next 30 years. These forever stocks are the ultimate in stress-free investing and of the force of change behind them. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.